getting to them, you know, I just had some personal questions for him. Maybe you could like really answer them now. Um, I just have a question. Um, <clears throat> so there will be Israelites in heaven. Am I correct? At the end of time, there will be Israelites in the kingdom of heaven. Am I correct? Yeah, cor correct. There will be 12 gates. And also there will be Gentiles, but they will be outside. But they haven't okay. came forth yet, my brother. Yet. Okay, so my next question is, um, the, the those those Israelites, will they live forever? Yes or no? You say Israelite will depend because you got some Israelites that transgress in the law. Like, for example, when you read on Revelation 21, verse 7, 8, it talks about the um, false prophets. They will be seeking the second death. So not all Israelites is going, not everybody, if they don't keep the law, that's commandments. Because there are many false prophets that's going to see the second death, right? Okay, well, I mean, I, I don't know where that says that in Revelation 21. 21. You, um, you can go I, to Revelation 21, 7, 8. You can okay. go there. You want to go there real quick? Uh, well, no, I actually had another question. Um, if you say that there will be Israelites who will not live forever, then that means that some Israelites will die. Am I right? Yeah, two-thirds. They're going to die. Okay. Now, last time I checked, two-thirds are not going to die at the very end of time when the kingdom has come. I'm asking what is going to be the eternal joyous state of these Israelites that make it to heaven? Like, that's what I'm asking. Will they live forever? Well, the Israelites, when they make it, they're going to be rulers of the kingdom. Right. The All right. Kingdom. So, okay. So my question is, um, now, from what I understand is, you just said that um, there will be Israelites in that certain time that will not live forever, even though Revelation 21 says that there will be no more death, no more sorrow, and so, he will wipe away every tear. So, so how is it okay. that you're gonna okay, have, sure. you know. Can, can, hold on, can I answer my question? Can I ask my question? Yeah, and then can okay. I, I can. So I can defend the question you asking me. Yeah, after I ask it. So my question is, if that's what it says in Revelation 21 about Israelites in heaven, how can you say that there will be Israelites that will be dying during that time? If Revelation 21 says there will be no more death during that time. All right. So let, let's come to the scripture, Revelation 21, 78. Brother Brian, can you follow along uh, with them? And then, um, uh, 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 Brother Cyril, if you can uh, uh, narrow it so we can get the last two statements. Uh, yeah. And then we'll just come jump right back to you and let you go right back into your full line of questioning. Yep, I understand. Can you hear me, can you hear me brother? Yes, sir. This is, this is Revelation 21, verse 7, 8. It says, He that overcomes shall inherit all things. I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fear for him, believing in abomination, in murderers, in whoremongers, in sorcery, in adulterers, and all liars shall have the parts in the lake of fire, which burn with fire, and the brimstone, which is the second death. So, brother, we got to understand that when he come back, this earth is going to be destroyed with fire. Okay, so right. now I, that's okay. Second, that's the second death, right? Yeah, so, so now I see that there will be people who have eternal life, and for those who are very vile and sinful, they will go away into everlasting punishment, which is a place that is not in heaven, a place that is not in the kingdom. So that means that these Israelites that you say that will die, they will not be in the kingdom. You know, I think you said they would be. I mean, I could be wrong. No, but, I would, yeah, no, I'm, I, no. I, I had made a statement that the people that's keeping the law, that's commandments, would okay. be in the kingdom. So you know? my, my, so like I said, just just to wrap it up, because I know there are other people that have to go. My my final question before I continue later is, you said that there would be Gentiles also in the kingdom. Um, no, my question, I said, I said outside. I said outside. outside, the outside. The kingdom. Be outside. Okay. Right. So at this time where everyone's living happily ever after, Gentiles will be living outside the kingdom. My question is, during this time, will those Gentiles live forever? It will depend if they if they surrender 
and keep the law. Yes, they will. But if they don't, because um, you have to understand there's going to be some Gentiles that don't surrender and some of them that don't, you know? So that would mean that when it says that there will be no more death, no more sorrow, that means you still have some, it, you know, some Gentiles who are very sorrowful because they're going to die during a time where there's supposed to be no more death and no more sorrow. Could, could you explain that? Yeah, all right. Well, can I go in scripture? Yeah. All right, all praise to the most high. Okay. All right. Um, when you go to Isaiah chapter 63, um, this is a prophecy of the Messiah in Isaiah 63 when he come back. And, um, it's referring to Edom. Um, this is Isaiah chapter 63, verse 1. And verse um, 4, it says, Who that come from Edom will die and gone from Brazil, that is glory, his apparel, surveilling in the greatness of his strength, and how speaking the righteous might to, mighty to save. Wherefore art thou red in thy apparel, and they garments like him that tried it in the wine fat? I have tried the, the, the wine press alone. I know the people that was none with me, for I will try them in my anger and tremble them in my fury, and their blood should be sprinkled upon my garment, and I will stain all my remnants, for the days of vision is my heart, and the years of my redeem is to come. So we have to realize when Christ comes back, this is a prophecy of Christ. He's going to have vengeance with Edom. Edom, oh. because Edom is considered to be a Gentile. Okay, mm. so my my so I just really will want to know. This really sounds like once again where Christ is going to come back and pretty much set judgment. Whereas Revelation twenty one, we're past that time. This is a happily ever after time where now all that remains are those who you know have done right. And we're living in a happily ever after time. It sounds like Isaiah 63 is during the judgment time, which is a little bit before Revelation 21. Secondly, it sounds like he's only dealing with Edom. It doesn't sound mm -hmm. like he's dealing with uh, all other, you know, Gentile nations or whatever, sinners in general. It sounds like he's only dealing with one group of people. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, go. Okay. Uh, go ahead. Back in with the line of questions, the back and forth. Yes. So my, my next line of questions there, let's go back to what you had said um, about the Gentiles. Now, you went to Isaiah 63 to simply say, look, God is going to judge Edom. Now, last time I checked, Edom is not, you know, all sinners on the earth. Edom is the nation of Edom. And so when you look at what it says in Revelation 21 and 22, it doesn't say that Edom is, is not getting into the gates. It says, no, any defiler, anything defiled, any whoremonger, any fill in the blank, whoever that may be, Jew or Gentile, right? You're not getting in. That's what Revelation 21 and 22 says versus your Isaiah 63 Edom uh, reference. And so I see an inconsistency with that, which brings me back to my question. These Gentiles that will be serving Israelites in the kingdom, yet you say they will be outside of the kingdom, will they inherit eternal life? Will they be serving the Israelites forever? And if not, will they die? You're asking that question, right? I can't Hello? hear you. I said, are you asking me that question? Yes, I'm asking you that question. If you need me to repeat it, I will. No, it's all right. So let's go to Isaiah 14. Because, um, like I said, there are going to be other nations that's going to cleave to Jacob. But they're going to serve us. But remember, um, I know a lot of Hebrew Israelites teach, oh, well, you're going to torture the, the other nation. They, we're going to lynch them. We're going to hang them. No, that, that's not what I stand for, you know, because it's going to be a righteous servant, you know. It's going to be righteous. No, sir, 
I, I, I don't I don't mean to I don't mean to um, yeah, intrude. Finished. But before finished. you give finished, me brother. I haven't finished. Yeah, you're not gonna let me finish my statement? Yeah, yeah, I, I will. Uh, just a, a question of courtesy. You heard, you, heard, you, heard, you heard what I said, right? Yes, I yes, I did. Yes. It just a, a quick question of courtesy. Um before you give me your scripture, can can you give me a, a yes or no question to, to my uh, answer to my question? I haven't, I haven't finished the first question you want to ask. Yeah, my yes, first question was, yes, will they die or will they live forever? But that's my, I said that again? Yeah, I just wanted to know, you know, the Gentiles, w w will they live forever serving the Israelites? Yes or no? Yes, of course, they're going to serve Israel. Yes. Okay. Go, go yes. to your scripture, and after that, I have another question. Yes, sir. Um, when you go to Isaiah chapter 14, verse um, 1, it says, For the Most High will have mercy on Jacob, and he will choose Israel, and he will set them in their own land, and a stranger shall join with them, and they shall cling to the house of Jacob, and the people shall take them and bring them in the place, and the house of Israel shall possess them the land of the Most High, for some servants and handmaids, and they shall take them captive who captive they were, and they shall rule over their oppressor. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Most High shall give thee rest from sorrows and fear the fear from the whole abundance wherein they were, they waste made with serve. So they're they going to be our servants and handmaids. So it's going to be other nations that's going to cleave to Jacob, the house of Jacob. And also, they're going to be outside the kingdom. They're not going to be in the 12 gates because the scripture says in Revelation, there's only 12 gates. And the 12 gates represent the 12 tribes of Israel. The 12 gates, right? Hello? Okay, are you, are you finished? Yeah, I said the 12. I'm asking you a yeah. question. The 12 gates represent the 12 tribes of Israel, right? Uh, yes, the 12 gates represent the 12 tribes of Israel. So my question, based on what you said, is two-part. <clears throat> the first part is, is that, that Isaiah 14 that you wrote, um, Isaiah lived around 740 B.C. So that was around 740 B.C. He's writing about when the Israelites actually returned from the Babylonian exile. That's what he's talking about. Ezra no, lived... Oh, uh, did you say something? Yeah, but I'm saying this is the time we're not in the land because we're in captivity. Only one tribe was in the only one tribe with only one tribe was in that land at the time. And that was the tribe of Judah. After the tribe of Judah went to cap after the tribe of Judah went to captivity in Babylon, that's when you had destroyed the destruction of of Jerusalem in seven eight I mean yeah, seven yeah, seven AD. We're right. I understand that, but we're we're fast forwarding that. I'm I'm going past that, so I'd like to continue what I was trying to show you. So I'm going to repeat myself because I, I want you to understand. So I'm going to repeat myself because I want you to understand. I'm going to repeat myself because I want you to understand. Isaiah was written in 740 BC. That was hundreds of years before the Babylonian exile when they were delivered by Cyrus back to Israel. Ezra, he lived during those times. This is hundreds of years later now. Ezra lived during that time when they were exiled back to Babylon. If you read in Ezra chapter 6, it says that many of those who joined Israel, who joined with them, came back, to the, came back with them to help rebuild the temple and also to celebrate the Passover. I think that's interesting because that, that's that's a fulfilled prophecy of Isaiah because if they're helping rebuild the temple and they ended up <clears throat> celebrating the Passover, the only way that they can celebrate the Passover is if they converted by becoming Jews because okay. that's exactly okay. what happened. Hear me out. I'm that's sorry. exactly what happened in Exodus 12. There were Gentiles in Exodus 12. God said, mm -hmm. those strangers can't partake of it. He said, no strangers will partake of this, this Passover. They have to be circumcised and then they can partake of it. 
that means that once they're circumcised, they're no longer strangers. Why? Because God said that no strangers could partake of it, which logically means that circumcision makes you no longer a stranger. And if you're no longer a stranger, that means you're a Jew. That's why in Exodus 12, it says that after they do this circumcision, they will be as one born in the land. You know, why is that? Because the one that was born in the land had to undergo the same thing that the stranger had to undergo circumcision on the eighth day. Esther, uh, uh, um, uh, Genesis 17 shows that with covenant Abraham. And so these strangers, these people that were joined unto them, right? There it is that, that evangelical thing. They were joined unto Israel. The only way that they can be joined unto them is that they will have to become Jews. So that actually did happen. And Nehemiah actually um, repeats the same thing. But the second thing, since my, my answer was two part, um, the second thing is <clears throat> you said that these Gentiles will serve Israel forever. They will not die. And so my, my question is this, how is it that people that Jesus never died and shed his blood for end up in the same place that Jesus that, that died and shed his blood for it. Saint, the people that got into heaven, you know, that are Jews, Jesus died for them. But there are Gentiles, according to you, that also got into heaven simply to serve Israelites. And Jesus, according to you, did not shed his blood for them. But yet, somehow, they're actually in the kingdom. That raises a lot of questions. Because it says, yeah, so my, this is my question is, my question is, remember, how is it? Remember, remember I made a I said outside, I said outside the kingdom. I didn't say inside the kingdom. Okay, well, you still have an issue. Your uh, issue is, you still have an issue. Your issue is, is you said that these Gentiles will serve Israelites. And if Israelites are inside the kingdom and the Gentiles are outside the kingdom, how can Gentiles serve people from inside the kingdom, if the Gentiles are in the kingdom. And also, why is it that they have eternal life? They're living forever, but they're outside the kingdom. I mean, it seems like they can just, uh, you know, just kind of live any kind of life that they want and still end up with eternal life. That means they didn't need Jesus. Are you sure? Is that something that you, you really think? that God would allow in all of his holiness? You really think that God would, would allow something like that? Now I'm going to ask you a personal now question. What? Now what? To I'll, I'll repeat my question for you. Do you think that God would allow Gentiles to have eternal life outside of the kingdom to serve Israelites, right? These are Gentiles who have not, who did, Jesus did not die for them. According to you, they did not get eternal life by Jesus. They got eternal life by some other means, according to you. And they're there to serve okay. Israelites, even though they're outside of the kingdom. So my question is, how can this scenario exist if, if, if God really means that, you know, no one defiled is going to get in? All right. Well, first of all, like I said, the Gentiles are going to play a role in the kingdom, but they're not going to be in, in the kingdom. They're going to basically be outside. Because like I mentioned, there were 12 gates. And the 12 tribes of Israel are going to be in those 12 gates. Now, if you can prove me wrong that other nations can enter those gates, there are 18 nations in the Bible, brother. And can I do that of, now? Can I prove that wrong now? I have a finished. There are 12 gates. And yeah. we can prove that in Revelation. And they you cannot know, get in the gate. Let's go right. to Revelation. What yeah, can we go to Revelation 21? Because I, I could actually show you that now. Can, can you skip down the, I believe it's uh, Mama Cherry, maybe you can get it. Because uh, you asked a very clear question. So can you go to verse maybe 22 or something like that? Maybe it's 23, 24. I can't quite remember which yes. one it was. So, you, so but, you're um, saying the 12 gates, the other nation go to those 12 gates. As you say. Well, yeah, you asked me, is that possible? And I said, yes, according to okay. scripture. So now I'm going to show you that that's possible. If you go down to verse 24, mm -hmm. it, it says this. 
and the nations of them that are saved shall walk in the light of it, in the light of the city, right? Right? It says that the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. That's into the gates of the city. And in verse 25 says, its gates will never be shut at all because there will be no night there. So you have, you know, you look that up. Other translation says, and the Gentiles of the nations that are saved. So you have Gentiles going into these gates. It doesn't say that Jews will go into those gates, but we do know that, you know, anyone that's in Jesus Christ will go into those gates. So right, can, I, can, I, can, I, can I play that statement? You said, you said in Revelation what? Revelation chapter 21, verses 24 and 25. Also right, verse 26, I, too. Okay, can I mention Revelation 21, 12? That's verse 20, oh, verse 12? Yes, so you yeah, see that read, the 12 okay. gates are there. Right, the 12, 12 gates are the 12 right. tribes, right? We see those yeah. gates there, right? Right, right. I want to I wanna, I wanna read it because that's okay with you. Sure, you can read it. You can read how there are 12 gates. You can read how many pearls of silver. You can read all that. But by the end of the day, when you go further down, it speaks about Gentiles that are saved going into well, those gates yeah. but what i'm saying that doesn't say the answer the gates but that's what i'm saying because they're on the 12 tribes and 12 gates well they're actually the sir gates. It, it does say that they wait, entered the wait, gates wait, verse 24 wait, no verse no sir wait, sir wait, it wait, actually was, does wait, say i'm gonna say this not, sir. it didn't say in, it didn't say in the gates verse 12 says and i had a wall great and high and i had 12 gates and the, at the gates and 12 angels i mean 12 angels named within their own was hard. The names of the twelve tribes of Israel. It says twelve gates are named after the twelve tribes of Israel. So it does not say well other nations can enter these twelve gates because remember there are twelve well, angels. Once again, sir, sir. Once again, sir. I want you to, sir. I'm asking you, sir. Not, I'm being not, so honest with you, sir. I'm being so honest with you, sir. You're so disrespectful, man. See how I, I, I listen. Not, to you? No, I'm, I'm being respectful. I'm, I'm going back and forth with you. Sir, you read to me that those gates have the 12 tribes' names on them, right? 12 gates represent the 12 gates, right? Okay, right. Now, my question is, now, I, I want you to follow me. I, my question, sir, I, I've heard what you said. I, I have a question. I'm not sure no, 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 no. I need to ask you a question because you had said that it doesn't say that Gentiles go into it. So, so verse 24 says that Gentiles go into those gates. How can you say that Gentiles don't go into those gates if verse 24 says, and the nations of them that are saved will walk in the gates of it? That's my question. Malachi, unmute your mic, dear. You got to, you got to unmute your mic. Thank All right, you. Hi, brother. Right, brother. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. This is what I'm saying. There are mm -hmm. eight nations in the Bible, right? Do you agree? There are what? There are 18 nations in the Bible, right? Uh, well, according to the Bible, there are actually 70, but, but you know, that's okay. Okay, 70, well, there are 70. Yeah. But at the same time, you have to understand that there are 12 angels guarding this gate. They're guarding this gate, and they're guarding but you're telling me that these angels are going to allow another heathens coming to these 12 gates and the gates that the 12 tribes of Israel are supposed to come in. Are you saying okay, that? Sir. All right, sir. I said specifically that the heathens did not go in there. Verse 24, <laughs> excuse me, I'm, I'm trying to get some clarity for you. I said that according to scripture, the verse that is in this chapter said, and the nations of them that are saved, 
It doesn't say heathens. It says the Gentiles of the nations that are saved shall walk in the gates of it and the gates shall not be shut. My question is, how is it that these, my, my, my question is, how is it that you say that Gentiles can't enter these gates? And verse 24 says that the Gentiles that are saved will enter these gates. Right. Okay, it's fine. Well, we have to understand that, like I said before, the 12 gates, the 12 gates, it didn't, in the package, the inscription you gave me, it did not say they came in these 12 gates. Now, if it said they can enter the 12 gates, now, then I can understand. Then I can understand because on the verse 21 and 22, it says, and the 12 gates were the 12 pearls, like you said, and several gates were one pearl, and the streets of the city were pearl gold. And it's the transparent glass. And I, and I saw no temple then for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are in the temple of it. So we have to understand the 12 gates just represent the 12 tribes. But the thing about it, it does in the, in the scripture you gave me, it never said it came in the 12 gates. Okay, sir, I'll tell you what. My, my thing is, can you read verse 24 for me? And can you tell me what that means? But does that says the 12 gates? I'm asking you a question. Does that mean that we in the 12 gates? The only gates that are mentioned yeah. are the 12 gates. And yet it says that the Gentiles that are saved will enter these gates. Can you read verse 24 if what you're saying is going against yes, verse 24? Can you read yes. verse 24 for me, please? I'm going to read. Okay. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the lights of it. And the kings of the earth should be bring their glory and to honor to it. You want me to read 25? Yes. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by his day, for there shall be no night there. Okay, so my question is, the, the nations of them that are saved, the Gentiles that are saved, to shall enter into the gates of it, enter into the city of it. Uh, okay, where are they at? What gates did they enter through? The gates, okay. That's fine. I mean, according to the chapter, what are the only 12 gates to heaven? Right. Hello for a second. Mm -hmm. I said, according to the chapter, what are the only 12 gates to heaven? That's the 12 gates of Israel for Israel. Right. And yet Gentiles are going through those gates, according to verse 24. Am I correct? No, because it doesn't say 12. It didn't never say they entered the 12 gates. Ah, said. you're right. It doesn't say they entered the 12 it gates. Say it it says that say they entered into gates. So my question is, when the Gentiles that are saved entered through these gates, did these gates lead to heaven? Did those gates lead to heaven? Did, 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 did they lead to the same place that the, the Jews will go? No, it did not. You're okay. About the, you said the Israelites. Yes. Okay, we got. We got to get distinguished the Jews and Israel. Jews okay. just come from the word of Judah, Yahweh, Dah, and Yehuda. When y'all, you Jews, know, I understand that whether they're a Jew or Israelite, we we definitely got that. Either way, they're going through those twelve gates. I get that. Yeah. You're right. They're all Israelites. Okay. All okay. Crazy. So my question okay. is, my question is, if those Gentiles that are saved are going through gates. And and I'm assuming, according to you, they're not going to heaven. Where are they going if the verse says, and the Gentiles that are saved will walk in the gates of it? What is the it, according to the verse? Is that not the city? That's going to be, that's talking about the city, but it's talking about outside the city, like I said. Okay, well, time out. How can it talk about going outside the city and it says that they will enter the gates of it, which would be the city? The city. Right. But what I'm saying, they never enter the 12 gates, my brother. They never did. Okay. Um, you know, at this point, I'm, I'm not going to, you know, really ask any more questions.